Afghanistan, known through the ages as the graveyard of empires, has seen the mightiest powers rise and fall. But today, it's a different kind of graveyard, and it isn't for empires. No, it's turned into a graveyard for its own people. Caught in the middle of a nasty crisis, they're suffering from a whole heap of problems that have all come together to create this massive humanitarian disaster. In this video, we're going to talk about that. We will dig deep into why Afghanistan's in the shape it's in. We'll rewind the clock and look at all the stuff that's been piling up, leading to the mess we're seeing today. Afghanistan is in the grip of a humanitarian disaster and in the midst of a famine. The collapse of the previous Afghan government and the withdrawal of Western support has led to soaring unemployment, with many unable to feed their families or even to heat their homes. That takes us back to before August 2021. During this period, American troops were still stationed in Afghanistan, playing a critical role in maintaining the balance of power in the region. However, the situation took a significant turn when the U.S. decided to withdraw their troops. This pivotal decision left a power vacuum that the Taliban was quick to fill. The Taliban, previously ousted from power in 2001, saw this as their chance to reclaim control over Afghanistan. They rapidly took over numerous provinces, eventually capturing the capital, Kabul, marking their return to power after two decades. Under the Taliban's control, life in Afghanistan has become challenging. Economic instability is rampant, with many unable to afford basic necessities such as food. Further compounding the crisis is the isolation from the global community. Prior to the Taliban takeover, foreign aid played a significant role in Afghanistan's economy. However, with the international community hesitant to engage with the Taliban-led government, this vital lifeline has been significantly reduced. The absence of this support has left the country in a dire state, with its future looking increasingly uncertain. Hunger. It's a real thing. Not just I skip lunch hungry, but I don't remember the last time I ate kind of hungry. That's what millions of Afghans are dealing with. And the kids. It breaks your heart. Almost a million little ones are on the brink of severe malnutrition. Overall, 7 million people are on the verge of dying from hunger. And the women and girls, they're having the toughest time. Last year, a study showed nearly every single home led by a woman didn't have enough food. How do they survive? They do what they must. Sell stuff they need, send their kids to work, and even marry off their young girls. It's a desperate, hopeless situation. The aid that does trickle in, it's like a tiny band aid on a massive wound. The World Food Program says because there's just not enough help, about 95% of people don't get enough to eat. And it's worse when a woman's in charge. Almost every single household faces this problem. Ramiz Alakbarov, the big UN guy in Afghanistan, said on March 15th that the fate of an entire generation of Afghans is at risk. You see, the real heart of Afghanistan's crisis is the fact that they were pretty much living off foreign help. Before all hell broke loose in August 2021, about 75% of their economy was hooked on foreign aid. But when the Taliban took over on August 15th, 2021, everything changed. The big guys who used to help out, led by the US, told the World Bank to put a stop to around $2 billion they used to send through this thing called the Afghanistan Reconstructive Trust Fund, or ARTF for short. That money used to go to paying salaries for teachers, health workers, you know, people doing the essential stuff. Other projects funded by the International Development Association also got cut. Apart from that, the Afghan government has $7 billion in U.S. banks which are frozen by the U.S. and aren't returning them to the Afghan government. This also has a big hand in the ongoing crisis. That money was like the lifeblood for Akin families, especially the poor ones. They got by on cash for work programs, cash distributions, and stuff to support their livelihoods. And it wasn't just the World Bank. Aid from the International Monetary Fund, USAID, and the Asian Development Bank also got cut off. Just like that, loads of Akin families lost their main source of income. Since that grim day in August, things have been bad. Real bad. More than four out of five Akin families saw their incomes plummet or disappear. The economy's in shambles and the banking system is practically paralyzed. Why? Because the US and other countries decided to disconnect Afghanistan's central bank from the international banking scene. This caused a huge cash crisis and now there's a shortage of banknotes, both US dollars and Afghanis everywhere. So you ask what's at the root of Afghans not having access to food, water, shelter, and healthcare? It's money, or rather the lack of it. Millions of dollars in lost income, sky-high prices, and the banking sector going belly up. Sure, there are other things making it worse, like a major drought and the scars of decades of war, but it's the economic shocks that really pushed the situation over the edge. Apart from that, no government has yet recognized the Taliban government and have said to recognize it only if the Taliban make an inclusive government and ensure the women's and minority rights. As for the UN, they're doing what they can to help. 
Their tribe give aid to the people who need it most despite the tough situation. They're coordinating with other organizations to provide food, water, and medical supplies. And they're also pushing for more funding from the international community, trying to remind them that even though the political situation has changed, the people of Afghanistan still need their help. But it's a massive challenge, given the scale of the crisis. The fate of millions of Afghans hangs in the balance and it feels like they're fighting against time. Further, if they weren't helped quickly, there's a high probability that they will shake hands with Al-Qaeda. And if that happened, it won't be good for anyone in the whole world. And that wraps up today's video. What are your views on this situation? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.